Good afternoon and welcome to today's lesson. I hope you all are doing fine and well and uh, I hope today's lesson can help you to learn some more information about grammar. Again, Paddington level, main course, and the, the main focus will be on conditionals. Um, I'm pretty sure that you have checked your course book and you know that in our course book, in upper intermediate level, we don't have any specific unit for conditionals. But why did I choose conditional is because of your final project. Uh, most probably you have been informed by your teachers that at the end of this module, EMA will be project based and you should send a five minutes video and uh, you will get grade based on what you talk about. But beside the topic that you're going to talk about, the grammar that you use is very important. The complexity that we have already talked about it. The time that we were focusing on present perfect and passive voice, I talked by details about the importance of complexity. Today we focus on one of the most important features and aspects of complexity, which is conditionals. In this lesson, we talk about all types of conditionals that exist in English language, so you don't have to be worried about it because you will learn a lot of things today, hopefully. Let's start by conditionals. Well, as you all know, there are three types of conditionals fundamentally, and uh, one, two, or three other versions of conditionals can be derived or can be made by these three main conditionals, and we will check them one by one. Let's go to first type of conditional, which is based on probability and possibility. As you can see, when something is probable or possible, we use conditional type 1. Structure. F plus subject plus present tense, then comma. I just want to remind you, here we have present tense, not necessarily simple present, because in type 1, we are allowed to use simple present, present continuous and even sometimes present perfect. Then we have a comma. As you can see that comma is written in red. Why? Because in writing and punctuation that comma is necessary. That we will get to that in a minute. Then second part starts by subject. One of these modals will, can, shall and as you can guess will and can are more probable and after that base form of the verb it means no to no ing no ed nothing at all a very classical example if i study hard i will pass the exam in if clause we have simple present and in the other side after comma we have modal will and base form of the verb which is pass another example if you don't come to class you can't pass the exam. Again, here I'm using simple present, but in negative form. And on the other side, we have can't. Based on the meaning, we decided to choose, uh, let's say, the modal can in negative form. But one of the, uh, let's say, forms of conditionals that can be made of type 1 is zero conditional. What is zero conditional? The structure is very close to type 1, but unlike type 1, it is based on fact, not just a probability or possibility. Look at the structure. It looks exactly like type 1, just we take modals in the other side of the sentence. So, as like as type 1, we follow the structure, but after comma and subject, we don't use any modal because we're talking about a fact. If I don't water the plant, it dies. I have a flower, I have a plant in my office. If I don't water, it dies. It is clear. It's based on a fact. So I don't have to use will or can to make it probable. It is 400% possible. Another example, if you yeah, heat ice or the ice, it melts. Again, scientifically, that's a fact. If you heat ice, it melts. I don't need to put let's say models are will and can to make a type 1. It is based on the fact. So if we want to review, the only difference of zero conditional and type 1 is the concept or meaning. Zero conditional for 100% sure should be based on a fact. And in a structure, in the other side after comma, we don't use any modal. Let's go to my favorite type of conditional, which is type 2. In type 2, we are talking about an imagination for the future. We close our eyes and we imagine whatever we like in future. The structure, 
In if clause after, yeah, if we have subject and simple past, just simple past, not all past forms, then uh, the famous comma, subject, and after that we have would and sometimes could, based on the meaning, and again after modal we have base form of the verb. As you can see, after comma we have would, which is unreal form of will. And whenever you have a word in a sentence in English, you can do whatever you want. You can be whoever you want. You can travel wherever you go. So that word can help us make an imagination, but for the future. Look at the example. A very funny and interesting example. If I had one million dollars, that's a kind of imagination, let's say maybe for everybody, I would travel around the world. Do I have it now? Of course not. But I can imagine for the future that if I had one million dollars, I would travel around the world. That's an imagination mentioned in a conditional style. The other example, if she spoke English fluently, she could get a better job. Again, she's making an imagination that if she was able to speak, let's say, English fluently, she could get a better job. But there's a note here. <clears throat> what is that note? As you can see in the structure, in if clause, we have simple past. And as you know, sometimes it happens that we make our sentence by using to be verbs. So am, is, and are should change to was and were. But there is an exception in conditional type two. Whenever you want to use past form of to be verbs, you are allowed to use were for all subjects. Normally I say I was, but when I want to put it in a conditional type two, I am allowed to say if I were. If I were you, I wouldn't do that. Uh, there might be a question for some of you. If you make this sentence by using was, if I was you, I wouldn't do that. Is it wrong? Not at all. But it is less common. It is not that professional to use was instead of were in type two. Let's go to the most challenging and interesting part of conditional, which is type three. If you remember in type two, we were making imagination for the future. In type three, we make imagination for the past, which is somehow mixed with regret. I'm sure that you know the meaning of regret. You made a mistake and now you are regretful about it. So here in type three, imagination takes us to a past, a chance that we had and we didn't use it. Or, or an opportunity that we had and we didn't take the advantage. The structure might look a bit complicated, but it is not at all. In if clause after subject, we use past perfect. And you are familiar with the style of past perfect. We talked about it in narrative tenses. Had plus past participle or third form of the verb. And after comma, we have subject would have past participle. That part is solid. It is less common to use could or even might. 90% of the time, would can take care of all the meaning that you're looking for. Let's check one more time. After subject, we use past perfect. And on the other side, after subject, we use would have past participle. Now examples. If I had one million, if I had had one million dollars, I would have traveled around the world. You might think that in type two, we had the same meaning. What is the difference that in this example, we use type three, and in the other one, we use type two? In type two, the guy who was making this sentence didn't have that $1 million, and he was imagining for the future. But in type three, this guy had $1 million in the past, and he lost it because of any reason. So that's why we use type three. He's somehow regretful because of the million dollar that he had and he didn't use it. And of course he can't travel around the world. Or the other one, it is exactly like the example that we had for type two. If she had spoken English fluently, she would have got or gotten, both are correct, a better job. In type two, the girl or she was imagining for the future job interviews. But in this one, she went for a job interview and she lost that opportunity because she didn't know how to speak English. That's why she used type three to show that she's somehow regretful about it. 
Type 2 and uh, Type 3, as you can see, and as you remember, are talking about imaginations. In Type 2, we talk about imaginations for the future, and in Type 3, we talk about imaginations for the past. So because in both of them we have imagination, we call Type 2 and Type 3 unreal conditionals, because they just focus on imagination and unreality. But there are some notes. In English, specifically in conditionals, we have a structure named inversion. What is inversion? It's very crystal clear. We change the part of a sentence structure or here conditional, let's say, clauses that we have got. But why do we do that? It's because of emphasize. When we want to make a more emphatic sentence, we do inversion. But we should careful. Whenever we do inversion in conditionals, that comma that we have already talked about it disappear. As you can see here, I will pass the exam if I study hard. After this phrase, we don't have a comma. So in inversion of conditionals, that comma disappears. Even here, we've got type 2. I wouldn't do that if I were you. These small points and notes are very important the time that you want to prepare yourself for a standard exam, specifically in writing. But as I said, like zero type of conditional, which has been made out of type one, we have two other forms of conditionals that can be made by mixing type two and type three, which is called mixed conditional. If you remember in type two, we were talking about an imagination in the future or for the future. In type three, the imagination was for the past. In mixed conditional, normally focus on something that we have, and we want to imagine not having that. So, unlike type 2, that the effect was in future, and type 3, that it was in the past, in mixed conditional, we want to consider, we want to, let's say, imagine not having something in present. So, the effect appears in present. For making type, let's say, mixed conditional, we should review the structure. You remember this one was the structure of type 2, and this one is the structure of type Three. I wrote this one by red and this one by blue because we want to mix it. I take this part from type 2 and after comma from type 3 to have a mixed conditional. Look at this sentence. If I had taken an aspirin, it's blue, it has been taken from type 3. If I, past perfect, had taken an aspirin, I wouldn't have a headache. Here we have would, base form of the verb, which is have, from type 2. I made a conditional, which is mixed conditional. Now I have headache, and the effect is in present. I want to just imagine it. The other one, if I didn't have a house, <clears throat> I would have slept in the park. First part is taken from type 2, and second part is taken from type 3. I have a house, and I go and sleep and live in my house. Now I imagine not having a house. What would happen if I didn't have a house? That's why I used mixed conditional, because the effect of not having house is happening in present. So first part is type 2, and uh, second part is type 3. Good. Now we want to focus on some exercise. I have, brought, uh, I have brought a collection of exercise from type 1, type 2, type 3, and even, uh, let's say, mixed conditionals. If you blank to go out, I dinner at home. Don't forget, here in these exercises, we are just focusing on type 1. And you can see, let's say, this structure, so it can be a big help. What is the answer? We'll check later. Second sentence, if I to bed early, I tire tomorrow. Third one, if he, the verb is come, I surprised. The last one, I hope it is last one, they to the party, if they invited. It was not. She in London, if she a job. He a better job, if he that exam. Now the answers. It is type 1, so in if clause, we need simple present, no matter positive or negative. If you don't want to go out, I will cook dinner at home. Number 2, if I don't go to bed early, I will be, or abbreviation, I'll be tired tomorrow. If he comes, I'll be, or I will be again, surprised. 
they'll go to the party if they are invited it is type 1 and it has been inverted I just remind you here there is no comma because we sent if clause to the other side unlike these ones she will stay that S is extra she will stay in London if she gets a job and the other one she won't get a better job if he doesn't pass that exam let's go to type 2 again we have a structure if plus subject simple past and subject would or could based form of the verb number one I just showed all sentences for you and then we check the answers together so if I were I just remind you that here we are using to be verb in past form so for all subjects we use verb if I were you I would get a new job most probably his job is boring and that's why he wants to change it if he yeah if we were not friends I'd be that D apostrophe and D is a wood I'd be angry with you if we lived in Mexico I would speak or even I could speak Spanish she would be happier if she had more friends a simple past they would go to Spain on holiday if they liked hot weather again simple past I would marry someone famous if I were a movie star last sentence was fantasy and interesting let's go to exercise for type 3 <clears throat> yeah again sentences and let's check the answers if you hadn't been late in if clause we have past perfect in negative form if you hadn't been late we wouldn't have missed the boss they are regretful about something that happened in the past if the weather hadn't been so cold we wouldn't have gone to the beach if we had arrived earlier we wouldn't have seen John and if we wouldn't have been happier sorry yeah we wouldn't have been happier if he had stayed at home it was he not we the last one they wouldn't have been late if they hadn't taken a taxi now we have exercise for mixed conditionals yeah again three sentences if you weren't so lazy you wouldn't have passed that test here we have simple past and over there <coughs> let's say uh, type 3 which is would have passed participle if yeah if you'd remembered to bring it to bring a map we wouldn't be lost now the last one if you had fixed the roof it wouldn't be leaking leaking means water drops so that's the end of first lesson um, as you know most probably you know we're gonna have two lessons back to back we go for a short break and after that we'll come back and continue by a topic which is in your unit 10 i guess about let's say uh indirect reported speech have a good day mm -hmm.